Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Holistic Cannabis Show, where I am always your hostess, Dr. Yolanda Henderson, and I am always joined by my wonderful co-host. Tell them who you are today. Guardian of the Galaxy. Yeah. All right, so we got this split personality thing that Mr. Henderson does. So if this is your first time watching the show, you know, he has his deal. I have my deal. I'm Cannabis Doc, a.k.a. Hat Lady, a.k.a. Dr. Henderson, a.k.a. Henderson's wife. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, so he's a guardian of the galaxy today, you guys. So it's going to be an awesome show. So sit back, relax. And learn with us as we take you on this adventure of cannabis and MS today. Uh, we're celebrating MS Awareness Month. We're celebrating. <laughs> yes. All right. And so, if you all do not know, I am a um, multiple sclerosis survivor and I have been diagnosed for exactly 10 years this year. So, if you all see me and I don't look sick, and it's all thanks to what you see in the background, this medical stuff is really, oh my gosh, it's so much better than the medications that I was on, and I wish I would have known about it sooner. Um, I just started educating. We own the Atlanta, Georgia Academy of Cannabis Science, where we educate and teach the masses, anyone who wants to learn, not just your doctors, even though we do teach doctors, we do teach other health professionals who do not get this formal training in their um, medical schools or in their schools. I am a doc doctor of naturopathy. That means herbs, that means your minerals, that means all of your things that will prevent those diagnoses that we have so if you've already gotten a diagnosis I get to your underlying cause and I help you to find out in what's in your body bio individuality because everybody is different but what's in your body that you're deficient of and we'll go ahead and help you get that taken care of all right so Today, Mr. Henderson is going to give us the outlets on how to watch the show and share the show. So if you are online right now, please share the show with your loved ones, your friends, anyone that you know may have multiple sclerosis, may think they have multiple sclerosis because there is a lot of undiagnosed, undiagnosed cases of multiple sclerosis and or if you just want to talk about multiple sclerosis or cannabis. Please call in and Mr. Hen Henderson, Mr. Guardian of the Galaxy, today will give you the outlets on how to watch the show. Go to your internet browser, type in statusnetwork.net, or go to your Play Store and download the Status Network app. Look for the Manifest TV, look for the Holistic Cannabis Show, and we're going to be right there. If you're on Instagram, we on Twitter, we on Roku, Fire Stick, we on Facebook, we on YouTube, we on Periscope. If you're on YouTube, want to watch the reruns, you find us at Manifest TV. If you're on Instagram, you're watching us live right now at ManifestTV.status. If you're on Facebook right now, you're watching us on ManifestTV.status. If you're on uh, Periscope and Twitter, you're watching us on status underscore network underscore. If you're on Fire Stick and Roku, Type in Status Network, Manifest TV. You want to call in? You got something to say? Uh, something that you don't want to say? Call in 470-251-4647. Awesome. All right. And we're also, by the way, we're on Spotify. We're on, let's see here. We're on Spotify. We're on iHeartRadio. We are on uh, Google Podcasts, we're on Apple Podcasts, and we're on Amazon Music, and we're also on, uh, let's say, Podcast Addicts. 
all right <laughs> so we're everywhere literally right now so we just want to shout out to all of our viewers all of our listeners if you're on one of our podcasts online and we just want to thank you all for joining us because we have a lot to say a lot to educate on and if we don't get this out we will perish for the lack of that knowledge so shouts out to you all and uh, mr henderson we have a great topic today on ms again and multiple sclerosis and cannabis and also the legislation so one of my great students who just um, finished my first course of the year uh, mr chris who's also my colleague for peachtree normals board was interviewed on last thursday all right so that was the final day for the house bill 196 and house bill 4458 all right so those two bills were enacted um two separately one was for hemp and one was for medical cannabis um and we're going to show that quick video about cannabis and how it has not been authorized to be here as a dispensary here in the state of georgia and how there's been a lot of hold up and people like myself or like anyone who's watching who has a medical or health condition um, in the state of Georgia or any state that does not offer medical cannabis to their patients are suffering. We're behind. They are allowing us to suffer by not putting these dispensaries out. So we're going to watch this quick video and we'll come back and talk about it here shortly. New details when it comes to medical marijuana in Georgia. Lawmakers say they expect legal cannabis sales to start in our state in about 90 days. 11 Alive's Doug Richards tells us how lawmakers hope to fix legal loopholes before it hits shelves. It's literally shrunk my tumor in size. Chris Kior has chronic benign tumors that he treats with medical cannabis oil that he has to buy from California, violating federal law, barring it from crossing state lines. It's just, it's just frustrating as a patient. Kior is among the nearly 30,000 patients in Georgia who have signed on to a medical cannabis registry but cannot buy it here legally. Two companies are currently licensed to produce medical cannabis, chosen following a mostly secret process conducted by the state's Medical Cannabis Commission. It's about money. Republican Representative Alan Powell wants to lift that secrecy by subjecting the Commission to the State Open Records Act. He also wants to broaden access to medical cannabis by allowing licensed growers to also sell it. He also wants to increase the number of state issued grow licenses, but the Senate Regulated Industries Committee stripped that from Powell's bill. This does not go that direction. The Senate Committee also eliminated the section of the bill that would completely dismantle the license issuing State Cannabis Commission. Instead, the panel created a committee to study it. Powell, a lawmaker since 1989, says the bill is likely to keep changing between now and the legislature's adjournment next week. Quite frankly, any process that takes seven years to accomplish when you have children and people who are medically necessity to this cannabis oil, I don't see the purpose in waiting. All right, so mm, okay. you all heard it here. All right, so they were also able to talk about adding Chris's condition to the um, list of conditions here in the state of Georgia. I was also available to talk with the committee and also able to share my input, and we're going to talk about that a little bit after um, the other news that we have. But, Mr. Henderson, what do you think about what's going on? I've been saying it from day one. It's all about that money. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 the reason for the whole up. It's about that money. That's the reason for all the changes. It's about that money. You know, right. it's 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 sad that the only hold up is about control of a dollar. Yeah. When you got people that's out here that's sick and really need this this medicine, you know. But. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it is what it is. Right. It is what right. it is. You know. So. They need to come on with what they need to come on with and get that right. together, man. Right. They got about a week to do that. Right. And, uh, you know, they're getting ready to go on their, um, you know, their leave for the year. So we want them to, you know, not throw the bill out. 
I mean, of course it needs some, some revisions because that's what I said. I said, you know what, if I comment on this, I, I would have a lot to say because the bill altogether is, is wrong for number one. Um, not that particular bill, but the cannabis in, in Georgia is all wrong. Okay. So first of all, they need more dispensaries. Okay. That's number one. They need about a hundred dispensaries of the class one, or they need about 50, um, to a hundred of the, the class one and about uh, 50 class twos, uh, which is 50,000 square foot. So it works like this. So in, in the state of Georgia, they are all in grow indoor grows. So it's a hundred thousand square foot for the class one license. It was a fifty thousand dollars for the class two license, and they were able to grow and dispense. It's a vertical vertical integrative system. That means from seed to sale. That means the grower grow the seeds. They have their seeds, um, you know, uh, from day one, or they can do the clones. Clones is you know you buy the clones from an however and then they grow the plant it takes approximately 90 days um, to grow uh, actual harvest large enough like you see behind us to to harvest and then once it goes through the harvest stage then it goes over to the processor well in the state of Georgia they only have one processor so that's number one all the way wrong we should have had more businesses turn into processors than they did the doggone licensees to dispense or to um, get a license for indoor grow I would think you know we uh, we need to go back and look at where the job market is because what we're doing here in the state of Georgia is we're offering the the industry help to start its it's a uh, boom you know it, it has to start somewhere so just like the start of the www dot you know the World Wide Web um, the, the cell phone industry all these industries they had to have a start somewhere and so we're just finding our opportunity where we see fit and a lot of people are looking at the opportunities in just this one sector which is not where it's all gonna be at right so we need processors distractors who's going to process the cannabis into the oil because I mean how many people are going to be able to do that one processing and so we have some people who testified or the processor who testified that they can do only so much of the cannabis crop to the oil so now we're going to have all of this crop and have to ship it across the state lines which you know is not really sufficient because why can't we do everything here in the state of Georgia right and then we're going to have um, just an issue with um, transportation that's a new industry that's going to be in it um, and there's a lot of people uh, transportation industries that are uh, short because the can because they can't pass drug tests or they won't allow people who indulge in cannabis to get into the industry when they have to take it for medical so we have an issue right there with people's jobs not being able to hire them because they indulge in medical cannabis we have an issue with the not enough processors because everybody want to own a dispensary we have an issue with um, people not wanting to get educated Educated because they think they know it all about cannabis, you know, um, because it's simple to think, okay, well, you just get a plant and you, you get a seed and you grow the plant and the plant blooms and then you turn into cannabis. No, that's not the way it works. It goes through a whole process. All right. And then there's uh, the type of cannabis. Okay. So there's a certain strains. Okay. So what's good for epilepsy is not the same strain for MS or what's good for chronic pain and back pain is not the same that is good for cancer. So we have so many different strains that we're going to need so many different dispensaries to keep them separate. All right. So we have this, this one district dispensary or two dispensaries or maybe 10 dispensaries for um, epilepsy and then we have about four or five for this ailment or these neurologicals because we kind of break them up into a circle so we have um, neurological disorders mental health disorders we have gastro disorders under one we have cancers under another so if they were categorized as such and I'm giving you all this information for free yeah I know I know I know but 
if I was on a committee, this is what I would say. I would recommend the different um, subtypes of the cannabis usages or the oils that's going to be produced or have the um, strains specified in those uh, documents that say what they're going to they're going to grow for so that there's other cannabis growers who can grow for a different reason so that you don't have an overflow of the same type of cannabis because we need about a hundred different strains of cannabis and we talk about those strains on the show we talk about um, how many strains and what the strains are good for so we have our strain of the week right that's important because that particular strain go for that particular health ailment all right so Again, this is Multiple Sclerosis Awareness Month. I talked to them about that. I told them, hey, this is what it's going to take. This is what we're going to need. You know, this is how much cannabis is uh, we're going to, to, to need this for. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and show you all where I talked and discussed with the commission um, on this past Thursday. And, uh, and actually, it was Wednesday. But we're going to talk about that after this quick clip an Iraqi freedom for this country and I am a doctor of naturopathy that studies herbal vitamins minerals nutrients I have a short testimony about my um, a disease or disorder that I suffered serving this country. I'm a multi, um, sorry, multiple sclerosis survivor. To, this month is Multiple Sclerosis Awareness Month. I am wearing orange in honor of those who are fighting this terrible disorder. You got an and opinion on House Bill 196? How about I you share do. that with us? Sure, I have an opinion. My opinion was that this should go and um, be revised at a later date, but patients like myself are in need and have been waiting for medical cannabis in this state for quite some time. Um, under what I came up with is that there is a high demand. I am also the owner of the Atlanta, Georgia Academy of Cannabis Science, where we talked and briefed on the licenses, the laws, the rules, and the benefits of getting the license, how to apply. We consulted in the state of Georgia under our classes, and we came to Georgia with the opportunity to help those who were Georgians to get the license and to um, be successful in their licensure process. We also came up with the, the numbers that it would actually take 100 dispensaries at 100,000 square foot of the class one licenses to great meet the demands. If only one out of every 10 persons takes advantage of the use of medical cannabis as their medication, the math is very simple that 3,150 times the one point or the 1,000 or 1 million people in Georgia that has access or don't have access to the medical cannabis at this time, that there would need um, $3,276,000. And the numbers may stagger anyone's imagination that this could be the economic potential of the implementation of the Haley's Hope Act. And that was back when Haley's Hope Act was in um, legislation. So obviously for this to happen, the industry will have to have or to be fully operational as a validation of this type of revenue. Um, we recommend that um, the Mayo Clinic recommends that for epilepsy, for the most part, patients are recommended to take 300 milligrams of CBD oil per day, which is nine grams a month, and at $50 per gram, if you're lucky to find that low of a price, this equals to $450 a month or 5,400 per year. Um, in addition, we stated that if a pound of medical cannabis in Georgia imitates the average price per pound in the rest of the country for the state of Georgia to fulfill the demand, it will have to produce a minimum of 1,755,000 pounds a year, which in a population of a million patients only equates to 1.67 pounds per patient. And I'm saying this as a number that will be increasing with the laws changing to adapt to the medical cannabis benefits. I teach in our, in our courses as a doctor that there are over 2,000 maybe health ailments that medical cannabis can treat, including multiple sclerosis. And it's not just per end stage, it's per the beginning stage, because at end stage, 
you're almost dead. Basically, by that time, we have an endocannabinoid system that becomes deficient, and those cannabinoids that we get from these plants will provide relief that we need at the beginning stage, at an early stage of a pre preventative, which is what I learned in my courses and my class and education degree, that preventive medicine is going to help with overall health and wellness opportunities before they get to the, the medical hospitals, before they get to these um, places where they're going to need the medications that we have not banned or that have caused side effects that have been tremendous to a lot of our health. Myself as a PTSD survivor, been on opioids and have suffered opioid addiction due to the opioids being overly recommended by physicians or doctors in the medical industry. Thank now I have no objections and I do not want to say that medical um, is a, I'm against all medical because we need we have accidents and we have um, opportunities for anesthesiology and things like that. I have eight kids so I've been to the hospital and had to have uh, anesthesia a couple of times so I appreciate the medical industry. My, my case and my point is that we have to understand that there are going to be people who would rather have a better quality of life with medical cannabis and holding up in court and legislation have taken me away from being able to go into the pharmacy or go into the dispensaries wherever and be able to get a preventative medication that will help my diagnosis be minimum as possible. And that's my testimony. Thank, Thank you, you for so your much. time. Appreciate you being here. Yolanda, I told you you could speak briefly. Do you want to speak again today or did you get your say yesterday? All right, so <laughs> I was nervous, y'all. <laughs> ah, that was me. What do you think, Mr. Henderson? What do you think about all of that rigmarole? Well, I mean, I'll just be repeating the same old thing all You'll over and over. It, right? You know, um, it's greed, it's money. I mean, even though the numbers are there and they will say that the, the state will bring in all of this revenue. That's what happens when you leave it up to the state, though. That's the yeah. problem that you're going to run into. That's it. When you leave it up to the state, you know. Mm -hmm. um, all right, that's Chris. That's our Cannabis student. need to be. Congratulations. Cannabis Chris. need to be uh, dealt with at a federal level. Because when you leave it up to the states, you leave this it up to happens. all these different opinions. This is what happens but, at the state But level. if you uh, decriminalize it at a federal level, remove it from the Schedule 1, what you got to worry about? Right. And Schedule 1 only means that it is it has no medical benefits, which we see that it does. If it didn't, there wouldn't be all of these doctors being able to now recommend this card, okay? So we know that that's not true. So we can scratch that one off the list of being a Schedule 1 drug, no medical, in, uh, no medical benefits. Then the next one is highly addictive. Well, we've already verified that heroin and all the opioids that they recommend are more addictive than cannabis. Soda is more Soda addictive than cannabis. Soda is more addictive than cannabis, okay? Your coffee that you drink every morning, if you all are the coffee drinkers, is more addictive Cigarettes than is more addictive than cannabis. Cigarettes are a lot more of stuff more addictive than, than, than cannabis. cannabis. And then, then the other one was no safety measures. Well, we have safety measures all over. Now, if people don't take the precautions on the label that says do not operate heavy machinery or do not do, drive or, or whatever that stated that's the same thing that's on your medication on your pharmaceutical medicines it is a safety protocol do not do it all right and people who don't do it of course they're going to have the same issues right and then um so those three alone set it up for it to be not a Schedule One drug. So what are we waiting on? Federal, federal government, President Biden. All right, so we have some information and some news that came out this past week, and we're gonna talk about that real quick. All right, so the studies, 
All right, Tourette syndrome patients report quality of life improvements following cannabis therapy. Participate, participants reported statistically significant improvements in their quality of life and employment status following cannabis treatments. All right. Then a study shows that short term use of prescription medication containing THC and CBD not associated with cardiovascular complications in high risk patients. Investigators concluded no adverse drug effects emerged during the treatments. All right, and now CBD administration mitigates opioid cravings in animals. The ability of whole plant cannabis extracts to reduce opiate reward and drug seeking behavior appears quite robust and of great clinical utility, authors concluded. And in the latest news, District of Columbia legislation expanding medical cannabis access enacted into law 32323. State policy update 32223. And then normals um, education was ad anti uh, antiquated marijuana policies are exacerbating supply chain issues. All right. And then Pennsylvania appellate court rules that medical cannabis costs should be reimbursed by workers' compensation insurance plans. I do agree. Kentucky Senate approves medical cannabis bill 316 to 23. All right, so congratulations, Kentucky. And then now we're learning, we're studying a study claiming harms from vaping CBD has many flaws. And Kentucky Senate vote increases likelihood that lawmakers will finally legalize medical cannabis access. And again, in Pennsylvania, the ruling clears way for patients to have their marijuana-related costs reimbursed. And in Texas, lawmakers advanced legislation to permit pain patients greater access to plant-derived cannabis products. And then again, in the District of Columbia, legislation automatically expunging past cannabis convictions becomes a law. So they're trying to get rid of everything that happened in the past that came up on a person's record or still on the person's record. Getting those things expunged is very important. All right. All right. And then there's another analysis that says drivers in traffic collisions more likely to test positive for high levels of alcohol than THC. Findings suggest that alcohol, not cannabis, remains a greater threat to road safety. So y'all heard it. And then in Mississippi, there's a bill amending medical cannabis access regulations advanced to governor. The, this, the legislation will make it easier for qualified patients to register for the state's medical cannabis access program and for physicians to participate in it. All right, and so we were on yesterday at the Violence Prevention for 2023, the PACE, or PACE, Parents Aiding Children Through Empowerment, and that was a great opportunity to, to join with your students against violence in the community. We met with a lot of different um, agencies and organizations that help with uh, violence prevention, and we got a lot of information through the breakout sessions and the information. So shouts out to Atlanta ISD, all right, Atlanta Independent School District. And one of my um, friends in the MS or MS partners um, talked about this. This was funny. The difference between booze and weed is five drunk people will start a fight and five stone people will start a band. So that's basically what happens when you're stoned. You do not want to fight. You do not want to shoot nobody. You do not want to do anything crazy, which is the stigma that they use against cannabis. You just want to relax. You want to be happy. You want to smile more. You want to go and have fun and mix with more like-minded people and just hang out and be happy. Now, what is wrong with being happy? What is wrong with not feeling down and depressed? I talk about that with um, cannabis people or patients who have that depression that comes along with one of the side effects of multiple sclerosis. All right, and so we have some more information about MS, but we want to talk and hear from you. So if you want to talk about MS, please join us live on our Zoom or on um, call us in person and uh, we can talk about your experience with multiple sclerosis. All right, so if you have something to talk about, please give us a call. 
right. Oh, and there are some pictures of some of the students who were um, joining the youth um, movement. So that was the youth. And then there's another organization. Um, it takes a village. All right. So that was the against gun violence, dropping your weapons. Now, did you know that researchers believe that hemp is so easy to digest because it contains proteins, edison, and albumin? All right, so those are some great proteins that our body needs. The benefits of hemp seed oil for the skin is anti-inflammatory properties of GLA, and then there's rich in omega-3, 6, and 9, and comedogenic rate of zero. And then the regulate oil production, it helps reduce eczema symptoms, assist in clearing acne fades, scarring, and hyperpigmentation. So there are benefits in hemp. Now, hemp and cannabis, people say, what is the difference? They have the same molecular structure. They are basically identical, okay? Just one of them have a delta-9, which will cause the TAC levels to cause the euphoria, and one does not, all right? So CBD does not cause euphoric feelings or high, what they call high psychosis, some people call it. Um, it does not do that. CBD is your antagonist of TAC. So it actually um, brings the high down. So a lot of the cannabis strains will be a ratio of your TAC to CBD, which will allow you to not feel, especially those who are uh, amateurs or beginners of medical cannabis, to not start with high doses of TAC, but to have a ratio. That way, that ratio will allow patients to not have negative side effects or feel the euphoric. They can just get the medication benefits of both of those cannabinoids in the body, which work greater together, all right? basically having those two together will help the body and and advance treatments to a lot of this disorders because a lot of disorders they ask for high doses like one of my students chris was saying on the news feed that the five percent tac here in the state of georgia is not enough okay so i reiterate that mr henderson it is not enough for uh that's basically a child's dose five percent um or a beginner's dose i wouldn't say just a child's dose but a beginner's dose um and you would eventually need to go back and change those laws from low dose tac oil to a higher dose which at least 20 percent is what we recommend um that would be the, the the perfect range for those who have cancer those who have ms like myself and we're going to talk about that real quick i got a photo on ms and how it helps with the body all right if you can pull that up it's the way that ms attacks um, from the oleodendrites and how cannabis comes and helps the those attacks by destroying those um, ole, um, those uh, attacks from the, the immune system. So if I didn't send that, I so what I does it do? That. Does it slow down the attacks? Does it slow down the effects? Yes, it of does. Of the attacks. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll send. It. I'll resend it. Okay, so it actually, yes, it slows down the attacks, and it's actually going to help the body to um, fight off the attacks from using high doses of medical cannabis. And I have the, the way that it work. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> maybe I didn't. I know I, I thought I sent all of them. Let's see. I used it in a couple of weeks ago and I talked about it so that people can actually see what happens to the body once that um, attacks or once those attacks happen. Mm. Okay. And so if any callers we have that want to call in while we're looking for this information to share with you all and educate you all on how cannabis helps the body, please give us a call. Mr. Henderson, you still have that number available. 
Yeah, 470 251 4647. That's it. And I'm looking. Okay, but why are you looking for that? Yes, I'm go, go ahead. ahead. With the credit. There Bam! Go. Hey, guess what? www.ntscredit.net, 888-959-2093. Uh, yeah, we're getting ready to get down with this credit segment right quick. Wow, they're looking for that right there. there it's going to be real simple. All right, so check this out. Right, you done pulled a copy of your credit report, right? You know you done had some tumultuous situations going on with your bread, right? So check this out. You end up filing bankruptcy. Down in the credit report, at the bottom quarter of the credit report, you'll see public record information, right? And when you see public information down there, now that public information section can include a variety of things. Judgments, tax liens, garnishments, levies, um, um, bankruptcy, filing, right? Child support. You see all that kind of stuff at the bottom of the credit report, right? Check this out. In regards to bankruptcies, all right? You can have a bankruptcy removed from the credit report. I'm going to say it again. You can have your bankruptcy removed from the credit report, right? And you ask how. Well, I'm going to tell you. Check this out. You simply send a letter and a return addressed envelope to the county clerk where you filed the bankruptcy asking them if they in fact validate or share information with the credit reporting agencies. They are going to send back a response in that envelope that you included in your request. They're going to send a, a reply back to you saying that they do not. Once you receive that reply in your hand, you are going to freeze CoreLogic, Say stream and Lexus Nexus secondary furnitures. You're gonna freeze all three of those agencies. Then you're gonna proceed to write a letter to Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion, asking them to validate, not verify, validate that bankruptcy filing. It's going to come back as verified. It's going to come back as verified, okay? But the one thing that they did not count on you doing was sending that letter to the court. So you're going to take that letter that you received back from the court clerk, and you're going to send that back to the credit bureaus after it come back verified. You're going to send that information back to them. How can you verify something that the original source does not even verify that makes that bankruptcy filing or that bankruptcy reporting on your credit bureau illegal. It is against federal law for any furnisher to report information that they know is not true. Bankruptcy courts don't verify or validate or communicate with third parties, mm. making it inaccurate. Okay. For all your credit needs, hit me up, www.nthcredit.net, nthcredit at gmail.com, 888-959-2093. You know, I got that from David Letter. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I like my sound effects. They just help me. <laughs> all right. So to all of my MS listeners, all right, listen closely. This, listen closely. This is, this is real good information, okay? Neurological diseases, cannabis helps with. It helps with spasticity, neuropathic pain, and it's a neural protection. That's, that means that it protects those nervous neurons in our bodies. 
All right, so for multiple sclerosis, and this is in our in this is in our course. This is in our information. I'm just pulling it from my information and cited. Everything is in there. The resource information, the doctors, the chemists, everybody who came up with this. This wasn't something that Dr. Henderson came up with. All right, so multiple sclerosis MS is a neurodegenerative disease characterized by symptoms such as spasticity, neuropathic pain, fatigue, depression, sleep disorder, gait disorders, sphincter dysfunction, and others. Okay, so it, it taken into account the scarce effectiveness of current treatments and the control of the symptomatology. It has provoked once again the to seek uh, alternative therapies. Now, with these symptoms, I can attest. I tested last week gait disorders. I mean, I have been walking and literally is in in my walking in in gravity. I know my feet is hitting the ground. My feet has stopped literally and I could not walk. My brain did not send a signal to my feet to lift my feet off the ground to take my next step. And if anybody knows how that feels, if you are an MS survivor and you know how that feels, you would be crazy right now because you're like, how did that happen? In my mind, I was thinking to myself, walk and my body will not move. So I understand how neurological disorders work. There's a lot of people who don't, and so they judge you because they look at you and they say, well, you know, you, you're okay. Well, pull that back up again. Let me tell you about how everything is working in the brain. It, it's not doing what it's supposed to do. Your brain is not sending that signal to your body to tell you to, to walk, all right? So spasticity. Muscle spasms at night, mainly at night, your muscles are jumping, they're triggering, they're feeling like convulsive, they, they feel like they're going to go into doing whatever they want to do, like maybe almost like a little mini seizure. Okay, I know and I can account for this, this stuff happens, but with cannabis, y'all, I have been able to sleep. <laughs> be happy I'm smiling I am so much better because of this and we have another photo on how exactly it works in on, on those nervous um, neurons so the benefits of cannabis for the control of MS symptoms have been demonstrated in multiple or in a multitude of studies although it is still a controversial issue and since some investigations um, no efficacy has been demonstrated um, there are evidence of improvements in the control of spasticity and neuropathic pain in addition to producing a neuroprotective um, that has the ability to solve the progression of the disease. All right, so if you could zoom in on that picture real quick, if you can. Right there to the left. Y'all see that, that diagram on the left? Mm-hmm. Right there. That's where it goes bad for people with multiple sclerosis. Right bad. there. All right, so these are nerve sites or nerve endings from the brain and the spinal cord. So you see at the top, wow. there's multiple sclerosis attacking inflammatory mediators, okay? Those, those are the red dots. Those are the red dots, okay? okay? The oleodendrites are what we need. Those are part of our immune system that is in our cerebral spinal fluid and our brains. Everywhere that we have nerves. And uh, basically, those sheets and those nerve um, um, mediators, those inflammatory mediators, are attacking our myelin sheets on our nerves and our nervous, you know, problems or and our nerves in our brain. And so, go back up, pull that back up. That actually is lessened, and they are starting to become destroyed or they leave those sites upon endocannabinoid activations all right so mm. endocannabinoids are the cannabinoids that are already in our bodies mm. but because we can become deficient in those cannabinoids the gray we, ones right we it allows that inflammation to come up so when we use cannabis mm. or we use the cannabinoids, you put the green THC, dots back on there. THC, CBD, CBN, CBG, the cannabinoids activate a response to block away from the inflammatory mediators or the bad immune system attacks. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's a neuroprotection agent. 
So understand that cannabis is not just to get people high. I don't know how many people I've heard this week as I'm, you know, allowing people to come on the show or talk to people about becoming a coach or telling people about the opportunities. It's why are you talking about this cannabis stuff? This is not good for you. This is not something that you're supposed to be doing. This is not of God. And I look at them and I'm thinking to myself, like, let me explain something to you, ma'am, sir. I have MS. And by the time I get done with my story and I'm telling them about my MS and how I'm benefiting from the med the use of medical cannabis and that I'm not some strung out woman that's strung out on drugs and I'm not crackish and not on crack or not doing anything to harm my community. I'm actually working in my community, helping my children. I have eight children. So yes, I do go to every single one of their events. I'm there front and center, track meets, every everything now because I take medical cannabis. Or I call it medical cannabis, and some people call it recreational cannabis. It doesn't mean anything because there's people who recreational drink a glass of wine every now and again. There's people who want to indulge in a cigarette, and they don't have to get in trouble because they want to have a cigarette, which we all know causes cancer. It has the largest amount of carcinogens than any kind of anything other than red dye number 40 and the pesticides that grows on our fruits and vegetables. So I really try not to say anything about people who bash me for supporting medical cannabis. I just tell them, you know what, I would love to educate you because we are perishing for the lack of knowledge. And the Bible did say that. He said that we will be a lover of those things that were not good for us, that we will be confused. We will hate good and love evil. So the thing about it is the good stuff that we're supposed to love and need comes from the earth and is sufficient for our bodies. We hate that and we're loving the other stuff. So once we get it together and we understand how important this is for us, we will start utilizing medical cannabis other than, rather than the other alternatives that has the side effects. And some of the side effects are long listed and they all end in death, which we all gotta die one day, I get it. But before I die, I wanna be happy. Bam, thank you. All right, Mr. Henderson. Strength White in diamond, the hybrid strain. All right, it's THC and it's CBD. It's a hybrid strain. That's why hybrid mean. Okay, you getting you getting both sides. You getting the THC, you getting CBD. Hybrid strain means you get indica and you get sativa. All right, you get them both. All right, all right. The people who felt this felt tingly, hungry, and sleepy. Mm -hmm. Now the flavor profile is pear, plum, and violet. White Diamond, also known as White Diamonds and White Diamond OG, is a balanced hybrid strain made by the combining of white and Space Queen. The effects of White Diamond are believed to be relaxing and talkative. Leave a review with Leafly if you have enjoyed this weed strain previously. All right? They're still trying to get the information on this strain. Yeah. These buds are vibrant and dense with a thick layer of trichomes over lime green flowers. White Diamond has 21% TAC. The dominant terpene is carophyllene, which expresses a combination of spicy sage and light floral notes. Medical marijuana patients say they buy white diamond to relieve symptoms associated with gastrointestinal disorder, cachexia, and MS. The original breeder of white diamond is Alpha Chronic Genes. All right. All Who right. got the best chicken wings? Uh-oh. I'm looking for them. Flats or drums? Lemon pepper. If you all want to advertise on the show, please do so and call us. You can reach us outside of the show at one. Rick Ross, go get them buffalo, man. You got a buffalo oh. running over the four yard, man. Go, go, go get your dogs. Yeah. All right, Rick Ross, shouts out. So you can reach that us at 1-888-959-2093. That's us outside, outside of the show. The buffalo us. got wings. No, buffalo don't have wings. That's just the name of buffalo wings, the chicken. <laughs> funny, funny, funny. I'm about to say, Rick Ross, you're about to come up shot on a couple of them buffalo if they got wings. Uh-oh, uh-oh. All right, so until next week, same time, same place. Peace.